How's it going knife nerds? So today we got a little project here. We are gonna do uh, some work on my ZT0452. So uh, I just got this back from ZT. I had them replace the frame lock side of the knife because uh, I damaged the original frame doing some modifications. Totally my own fault. Um, sometimes when you're modifying stuff, you can make mistakes and screw things up and that's what happened and so I sent it to ZT they have a really good customer service department over there and for a small fee they replaced the frame of the knife completely for me so I've got a brand new frame on this knife and uh, uh, when I got it when I actually when I sent it to them um, part of the reason I was working on the knife originally was because it had a really uh, floppy dead fish weak detent on it and so I was going to modify it by installing a ceramic detent ball and doing some other things to it. And I messed up the detent ball installation by pushing the ball too far into the frame. And so um, on a ZT, the, the detent ball hole is not drilled all the way through the, through the frame lock. So if you press a ceramic ball into it too far, there is no getting that ball back out of it. So that was what I did wrong. Um, that being said, uh, it was a long story. Anyways, um, so I just got it back and the D10 is nice and strong now. In fact, it may be a little too strong. Um, I mean, it feels good and snappy. There's nothing wrong with that. But I'm getting some lock stick and it's not it's not very drop shutty like it like a like an 0452 normally would be because this is just a huge huge four inch blade here and most of them are pretty drop shutty this one is not um, it's smooth but it's not drop shutty like like they typically are because there is a lot of lock bar tension here we're locking up pretty deep and there is some lock stick see that so let me show you so uh, significant lock stick I think if I reduce lock bar tension on this knife, I can still keep a very snappy action and probably reduce that lock stick a little bit. And uh, while we're in there, I'm going to do a few other things that I'll walk you through as well. But um, I've had a lot of requests to show people how to adjust uh, a, a lock on a frame lock. And so that's what this video is mostly going to be. I'm going to show you how to adjust your lock. All right, so let's get it started. I believe we are T8 on the pivot here. Like they did a good job Loctiting that correctly. They didn't overuse the Loctite. It came out pretty easily. And we are probably can leave that in there uh, I believe we are T6 on the hardware here on the body One modification I have done to this knife already. Uh, ZT does this weird machined finish on their carbon fiber. It kind of, they put like this machined texture on the face of the carbon fiber. And I've always hated it. It comes on all of their, all of their knives that have a carbon fiber uh, show side scale. And I've always hated it, so I sanded that off and now we have this smooth finish on the scale rather than that weird textured machined finish that ZT does so that's the first mod that I did on this knife uh, that was actually done before I sent it to ZT okay and we've got 
that one washer here that goes in the carbon fiber side and we've got the KVT bearings stop pin is really really in there actually I probably don't even need to pull that stop pin out for this process all right Let me go ahead and pull, I'm going to pull the clip for shits and giggles. Because I got some uh, new hardware I'm going to replace on here. And uh, yeah, just some spare hardware that I had around. This is not a specialized hardware kit for this knife but uh, this uh, the the factory body screws are T6 on here and um, I've got some screws that are pre-cut to be about the exact same length as these but they're T8s and they're black so they match and so that'd be pretty cool just gonna give it you know a functional upgrade of T8 hardware coming from T6 hardware so that'd be a little functional upgrade there okay so um, removing a lock bar insert that's gonna be kind of the big um, thing that a lot of people have trouble with in adjusting a frame lock so most modern frame locks come with a um, with a oh, that screw looks kind of funny uh, with a lock bar insert which is this little guy here right now ZT in particular the way that they build theirs um, the detent ball is pressed into a little tower of titanium and then the steel in insert just kind of wraps around that little tower of titanium and then they've got a, a positioning uh, peg right there and then the screw that holds the lock bar insert secure right here. Um, these can be kind of difficult to remove. So the trick to do that, and it's you know it's the same trick that I use on most um, lock bar inserts. You want to get your correct bit size, which I believe is a T8. Yeah, T8 on this one. And then you'll you'll loosen that screw up and try to pop the insert out now in most cases it's so tightly fitted it's not just gonna it's not just gonna wiggle out right that's not I've got the screw loose and that's not going anywhere sorry if I get off of camera a little bit here I've got the camera up kind of high and it's hard to see uh, so yeah so then what you're gonna want to do is loosen that screw until there's just a few threads hanging on to it there and in fact what size screw is that it looks like a f let me see it's probably a 440 screw let me see if I have a spare screw with threads that size I've got these are just scrap screws that I use for various things I don't know if I have any that size let me see here I see one in there that's got some pretty fat threads let me see if that fits the longer the screw is that you use for this the better off you're going to be and preferably um, don't use the factory screw if you can avoid that <coughs> excuse me so uh, now we got a T6 screw instead of a T8 but um, let's see if this threads up uh, 
think that's I think these are metric threads um, actually this lock bar insert is loose it's already popped loose but I'm gonna show you anyways just as an example <clears throat> so what I'll do um, I will take the insert and kind of hang it off the edge of something and then I will put the the bit into it while it's hanging off the edge I'm just gonna use this for an example here I'll have that lock bar insert hanging off the edge of a little platform of some sort and I'll take the bit and the bit driver and place it into the screw and my little uh, peen hammer here and just tap it and as you can see even just that little light tap I knocked out the insert now this can be easier or harder depending on the knife and how tightly fitted that insert really is so if it doesn't come loose um, you can hit it harder especially if you're using a spare screw instead of the, the uh, factory screw um, you can hit it hard enough to damage the screw or the screw threads I should say so just be careful with that don't get too crazy with it unless it's a disposable screw and uh, that's one of the reasons I recommend using a spare screw if you have one and uh, yeah but you can use the stock screw just don't hit it too hard and you won't screw up the threads um, titanium screws are more fragile than um, than stainless steel screws this is totally loose and it's still giving me trouble there finally got it okay so lock bar insert removed right now the next thing that you I will usually do is I will take note of where the lock bar this is the lock bar is in relation to this frame piece here okay and as you can see the very corner of that lock bar is kind of parallel flush with that you know um, that frame piece right there and I'll usually take my phone and I'll point it just like this and I'll take a picture of it so that I have a reference point to go back to if I need to do further adjustments okay so now I know where the lock bar was now in order to adjust the lock bar out I'm just gonna flex it out past the point of where that was and as you can see I just dropped it quite a bit I actually just that little bending past that point I dropped it significantly below that point right there and uh, that might be a good adjustment um, we're gonna check that first you know always check your work before you try to go further or you know or or back so okay so say now you had a weak detent you want to make it stronger right so you're just gonna push it more in and just bend it in until you're getting a little movement okay now we're back pretty much flush with that ledge right Now you can actually heat the uh, you can heat the lock bar here, um, and you'll it'll be easier to bend if you're if you have a really stiff lock bar and it's hard to bend, heat it here at the relief, and it will bend easier. You can use a little torch and heat that up, or you can heat it with a heat gun or you know whatever you want to do. Um, so I have dropped this again just slightly below the ledge there. Actually, that's quite a bit below the ledge. I might push that up just a hair again. Yeah, okay, I like the look of that. So now we're going to reinstall the lock bar insert and test our work. I really don't like the way ZT does their lock bar inserts. That little freaking tower of titanium that they install the detent ball in. Just a bad design. Um, it's kind of, I don't know. It's old school. They've done that forever. They're kind of set in their ways. Doesn't seem like they want to update anything over at ZT. 
just keep doing what they've been doing because it works I guess so we're just gonna do a quick test run here oh I guess I should put the insert screw back in first that was a T8 just gonna do a quick test run on the lock bar real quick here and then if everything is all good with my adjustment we're gonna move on to a few other minor mods let's see here all right so ooh, in fact uh, let's get out those t8 screws I was talking about so I've got the black t8 screws here that are pre-cut to size to fit this knife and I have exactly enough of them six of them right. and we're going to put our standoffs back in first so now we'll have all T8 hardware on the knife which is nice you don't have to switch between two different bits always a good thing on here Anytime you're um, testing your lock bar adjustment, you want to fully assemble the knife. A lot of people will try and skip these body screws on the front side there just so they can keep adjusting, but you want it fully assembled so that you know exactly how well um, your adjustment has worked. And so we're putting all of those bad boys back in there. Blade play there. We need to tighten it up a little more. I'll do it. Okay. Now, now I have uh, probably removed most of my G10 oil. It's still sticking a little bit. However, um, definitely more drop shutty and we've still got plenty of snap left still kind of lock sticking a little bit it's kind of annoying the uh, for, for for those who don't know um, the steel lock bar insert is supposed to prevent lock stick not give you lock stick so that's a little bit of a annoying thing there um, um, it's nice and drop shutty even without oil yet but I think I made it a little too weak I'm gonna put just a little bit more tension back onto it and so we'll go from there See, I don't have to remove the insert to add more tension back to it unless I put too much tension back on it and then I would need to um, remove the insert to adjust it again, right?
you're gonna have fun trying to get rid of that lock stick um okay so we're back at it here and we want to get that lined up get rid of that bearing so we can see it okay so we're significantly below that ledge now right so uh, let's take it back up just a notch. I think that looks pretty good. Let me see here. I think that looks pretty good. And we took some tension off from where the factory setting was at got it pretty much just below the ledge just a hair right like it would have been about right there from the factory we've got it just a little bit lower that's what we want I don't want to take a little bit of tension off not too much now you may have to mess with this multiple times you're not you know you're not guaranteed to get it exactly right the first try although sometimes you will get it right on the first shot it just depends on the knife and some knives are easier to adjust, some are more difficult. Um, this is a relatively simple frame lock to adjust, and so um, relatively easy. You know, on on most frame locks, if it you know if you if you don't have trouble getting that insert out, the adjustment portion is fairly straightforward. It does take practice to learn. You're not just gonna pick it up and do it right the first time every time um, you know you will get better at it after you adjust a few knives and, and kind of get a better feel for how it all works okay now okay yep we got a little bit more snap back in the blade I'm gonna put one screw back here just to make sure Make sure everything's tight there and see how we're really doing okay yeah we got good drop shutty good snap okay I have no oil on the detent ball right now so it's not gonna be full drop shutty and it will break in some over time I think this is right where I want it it's more drop shutty than it was but still got perfect snap I can't fail the blade at all that's a big thing with frame locks you want to try and get that detent exactly to where when you flip that when you push this flipper tab as softly as possible the blade won't fail to open okay I'm pushing that as softly as I can and it's not I can't fail the blade right I can't fail to lock up and so that's always the goal is to have that medium between drop shutty and having a good snap snappy detent that that locks up reliably that's what you're shooting for that's what the goal should be and so um, this is pretty good I dig it in fact uh, I think it will break in a little more over time and become even more drop shutty and uh, especially if I put a drop of oil in here on the detent ball real quick Some 85 weight nano oil and we're gonna get that worked into the lock bar here and yeah that's right that's pretty much it it's not quite guillotine it's of a smooth controlled drop that's pretty good I dig it now this knife has a large blade so it can be guillotine but I'm always looking for that happy medium. I want a snappy detent with as drop shutty as possible. And so um, this is just right for this knife. And with break in time, it will probably become more drop shutty. So, so, so we're good that, there. All right, so that is pretty much how you adjust a lock bar on a frame lock. It works basically the same for liner locks. Um, however, liner locks can be a bit more difficult because 
Um, they're usually they usually have stainless liners that are a little harder to bend than titanium and so um, keep that in mind doing a liner lock works the same way but it's typically there are significantly more difficult to bend the lock bar and um, adjust we're gonna get this apart real quick again and I'm going to do a few more little mods here I am going to replace the uh, stainless steel KVT bearings here with some ceramics that I got. Um, so this is uh, an easy way to put ceramics into your ZT knives that have these blue KVT style bearings. Um, Gillian Knives makes custom bearings that fit ZTs, but they're like never in stock. They're very difficult to get a hold of. Um, so this is a good alternative. You can just keep these uh, KVT cages and you can pop the stainless steel bearings out and replace them with ceramic bearings. The ball size that you want to get is 3 30 seconds. And so um, I've got some cool 3 3 30 seconds balls here. These are, um, I believe the word is zirconium oxide okay and uh, so these are the these are slightly different than the uh, silicon nitride which are the black um, ceramic bearings these just have a slightly softer um, hardness to them than the silicon nitride so they're probably better in titanium frame locks where there isn't a hardened steel washer there than the black ones and they look cool as shit and so you can see there 332 is the bearing size and uh, I got this batch here we are just going to cut these open and dump them on the tray over here my little mini mini work tray from um, journey tool company there has been surprisingly more handy than I thought it was was gonna be I have another uh, full-size work tray for knives but this little mini tray keeps my bits organized pretty good and it's cool I dig it okay so we're just gonna get some balls laid out over here good pair of tweezers to pick them up and uh, then you want something to um, act as a little port so you can pop out the original detent balls um, I'll just use the frame in this case and I've got a little pin punch here and I'm gonna use the hole that is in the scale here to catch my balls when they fall out of the races there pun intended so um, we can I'm gonna take my little stainless balls and drop them over here separately. One at a time, you just pop those out. And um, I usually will hang on to the stainless steel balls just for whatever reason to put in my spare parts bag and whatnot. Um, you know, I've got a huge bag of spare knife parts always hang on to your spare parts because you never know when you're going to need something for another project or another knife or whatever I'm losing my balls my balls are rolling all over the place Luckily, I have an enclosed tray here with a big fat half inch wall on it, and they're not going to escape anywhere. Okay. Now, uh, let's get some fresh balls pressed back in here. So, we're going to grab our tweezers, which ran away over to here. And, uh,. Just grab up these balls, try not to let them roll off. And you can even literally just press those in with your finger.
and they get away. They really get away. Luckily, these 332 balls are pretty big. I like the bigger balls. Yeah. The, the 1 16th balls are a lot harder to work with. Oh man, I'm being klutzy today. I think it's because I got the camera set up here. Normally I'm pretty good with this uh, precision work here. And we're just taking these balls and popping them in the races here. Now um, these are a grade 5 um, zirconium oxide ceramic bearing that I purchased on Amazon. Um, in case you were wondering. Grade 5 is very important. You don't want low grade bearings. Um, grade 5 is about the best you can get. Um, they do make a grade 3 but I can't find those anywhere. Um, so the grade tells you how perfectly round the bearings are and grade 5 being a very very precision bearing and uh, so a lot of times the stainless steel bearings will be grade 10 or lower so what we're replacing here I don't you know I can't verify I don't know what exactly ZT uses but I will assume that they're they're either grade 5 or they're grade 10 um, and if they're grade 10 we are actually upgrading the quality of the bearings that are going to be on the knife here so now we've got our sick looking zerk oxide bearings there we got one more to do this takes a little bit of time my apologies for the slow rolling video here that's why I've got some smooth jams in the background for you guys so you don't get too bored come on tight one man those blue cages look super cool with the white bearings now you can choose to run an oil or not run an oil um, with these ceramic bearings I probably will put just a tiny dab of 10 weight nano oil into there um, just for smoothness sake but uh, you can certainly run them oilless if you prefer to attract less dirt to your pivot um, because if there's no oil in the pivot it won't grab dirt and create mud in your pivot as easily and so that would be one reason to not use oil um, however I don't typically get into really dirty work environments um, so I don't really worry too much about a little bit of dust getting in there and I chronically clean and tinker with my knives anyways so um, running them oilless is really not my thing I prefer them to run a little smoother so I do use oil my preferred brand is nano oil and uh, that's what I've been using for years and I think it's probably the best oil lube on the market for knife bearings um, there are others out there that I have not yet tried, but the knife lubes that I have tried did not outperform nano oil in any way, shape, or form. In fact, I think nano oil has outperformed every oil that I've tried in a knife pivot. Um, as far as um, longevity of the oil, the stuff just stays wet. It stays in the pivot and it stays wet and it stays slick. A lot of other lubes will um, start to get gummy after a few months. And uh, you know, even if you're not really using the knife, they just, it just 
the oil just sets up and just gets gummy. At least it does here in the humid environment that I live in in the south. Um, I don't know how things react in other environments, but um, yeah. So anyways, that's why I like nano oil. The stuff stays consistently wet and slick. And so um, I've not had any issues with it. It's really good stuff, especially like, hello, Mr. Ant. I, we, we got an ant over here that wants to help assemble the knife. Appreciate that, bro. Good on you. Go get that ball, ant. Son of a bitch. I'm on the last ball and it tries to run off on me, of course. Oh, you don't want to go? Okay, fine. Okay, so we've officially got all of our super sick white ceramic bearings installed here. And this is getting to be a long video. If you're getting bored, feel free to turn me the hell off. Um, okay, so nano oil. Um, let's get my tin weight here. And, oh, hey, Mr. Ant, get the hell out of here, dude. Seriously? Trapping my style, bro. All right, so a couple of dabs of nano oil there. Get that stuff circulated around. I'll probably take just a little bit and place it onto the pivot barrel so that we got some lubricant between the barrel and the blade. Okay, so we got we got new ceramic bearings, we got new T8 hardware, we got a freshly adjusted lock bar. We're gonna put some 85 weight. Actually, if I got the knife apart, I prefer to put the detent oil, which I use the thicker um, 85 weight, put the detent oil onto the blade itself rather than on the detent ball. Um, because it's a little easier to control how much I put on there. Um, the least, oops, okay, maybe I'm not controlling it that well. Uh, that was a lot of nano oil. One thing about nano oil, a little goes a long, long way. So um, I'm just kind of trying to spread that out a little bit. Boom, boom, boom. Now, Back to our tin weight. I don't mind over lubing this knife very much. And so, um, yeah. Get some oil going, put our washer back. And we are reinstalling scale now. Never was a fan of this pivot. Um, it's so big and awkward. I'd probably like to replace it with a tie connector pivot, but this pivot is so big, I'd have to get the half inch pivot and then cut it down to size a little bit to fit into the counter bore on this knife. So I've kind of been putting that off, but maybe I'll do it down the road for shits and giggles. Now this may or may not be the last mods that I do on this knife. Um, it's a pretty cool little um, mod platform to work with. The last mod I'm going to do today is to put a aftermarket clip on there. We've got that. The, the original stock ZT clip is just, it's horrible. I absolutely hate that freaking clip. And so um, I've got an MXG gear titanium clip here that's in natural tie to kind of match the frame and uh, so that should look pretty good on there and be a much nicer clip than the stock one. 
all T8 hardware now. Totally digging that. That was a smooth upgrade. Didn't have to switch to my T6 bit to assemble the knife. Very nice. that looks yeah I think right there is good uh, a little bit of adjustment there alright oh yeah now this is not even broken in mind you Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Still a tiny bit of lock stick, but it's definitely improved compared to what it was. Um, hopefully, if I just whack it um, open real hard a few times, that lock stick will start to go away and be gone within a few days of playing with it and uh, be all good. But um, the lock bar is tuned exactly right. We've got just enough snap, just enough drop shuttiness. And we've got our new uh, ceramic bearings in there and our new clip, which looks pretty dope on there. I really dig these MXG gear clips and they, they have a pretty wide variety to fit a lot of different ZTs, Benchmades, and Spydercos. Um, while I'm here, I'm going to go back through and double check all of my body screws make sure it got everything snugged up right and uh, don't think I'll need any Loctite on this pivot it seems to hold pretty good on its own without Loctite so pretty cool and uh, that is how to adjust a frame lock and how to install ceramic bearings in a ZT cage all right guys I'm gonna get out of here and uh, hope you enjoyed the video even though it was a long one um, Peace out, y'all. Later.